What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and recently I've been talking a lot about making some warrior content so today I am going to go over a lot of the initial ideas and things to think about as a warrior DPSing in AQ40. Now I do want to say this isn't going to be analyzing my own gameplay, it's going to be analyzing Alondos, which we actually looked at a little bit in the Rogue video about early phase of AQ, and we're still going to go over his number one parse run, so he has the most boss damage in all of AQ by almost 100. And we're going to break down pretty much each encounter and what you want to be thinking about during each encounter. A big thing though for Warriors before I get into it is that each Guild is extremely different and your boss kill times make a massive difference with when you actually use cooldowns. Cooldown usage is a huge thing in min-maxing for warriors and getting the most out of something that's like a 30 second cooldown like death wish or something is going to be the difference maker between an incredible parse and most of the time just a pretty good one. So if you want to min-max, you do want to study your guild's kill times. You need to know your guild's kill times so you can know the best time to use different cooldowns. But again, as I was saying, we're going to go through Alondo's run, this number one in the world boss damage run, early phase, guys. It's, we're going to see a lot more damage throughout the later phases, most likely, and we're going to break down what he uses at certain positions and why, and other things you can look out for on each boss encounter as a warrior, kind of as any melee. So if you, of course, like this sort of a content or anything in general that I put out, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it helps a ton. We are almost at 10K subscribers. We are so close. And if you want to see when I'm going live, make sure to join our Discord channel. It was extremely disorganized before, but we actually just fully reorganized the channel. So shout out to Aramit and Spot and Falcon for the help on that. And from there, let's get right into it. Okay guys, so we're gonna go down boss by boss and break down when he uses different CDs as well as why and what you can do, sort of what things you can look out for to min max. An important thing also on this breakdown is gonna be cooldown usage with your trinkets. Trinkets are extremely helpful and he does have Badge of the Swarm Guard, so if you don't have that yet, it's totally fine, but it is extremely useful as a trinket. It doesn't put other trinkets on CD, so you can use it in combo with things like Earth Strike or even Jom Gabar, but if it's a cleave fight, which is most of the situations where you're using Badge of the Swarm Guard other than Twin Amps, you would even want to use Earth Strike over Jom even because most of the damage is going to be broken out really, really quickly. Okay, so moving into the Prophet Scarum. Most of their melee, and you will notice this, almost all of their melee is just staying in the middle section here. They are not really worried about pushing the boss past the 75, 25, and 50% thresholds. I don't know why I said it in that order. And right as it splits is when he's going to use his cooldowns. He does get a Crusader's proc, but it's more so right as the boss splits is when he's going to use both Badge of the Swarm Guard and Death Wish. Although he hasn't yet used Earth Strike, Badge of the Swarm Guard is extremely useful because you don't have the five Sunders up on the boss right as it splits the first time. And once Badge of the Swarm Guard gets down to 20 seconds, 20 seconds left on it and he's already got six stacks up that's when he's going to use earth strike so it's timed out to work perfectly with each other so badge of the storm guard a trinket that lasts 30 seconds combined with death wish and then the last 20 seconds of those is going to be earth strike the important reason why using this together if you have the option for it is because again right as the prophet splits it's going to lose those stacks of fairy fire sunder expose armor whatever you have breaking down its armor so it is a huge trinket actually for this fight and it just always is very very useful in any cleave situation and then timing your earth strike with 20 seconds left on your death wish is also very massive so after using your cooldowns you'll see that the boss length he tries to time it with his boss lengths so 
So as the boss goes into its last split, he uses Blood Fury because there's only a short amount of time left on this fight as long as they don't get hit by any of the damage from any of the explosions, he's not going to be worried about dying. And also, he uses his Mighty Rage Pot below 20%. He still has time left again on all three of his big CDs, Death Wish, Badger of the Swarm Guard, and Earth Strike. Still three seconds up, gets a Crusader proc, and then he has Blood Fury and his Mighty Rage. So he's just pumping the damage here to finish off the boss. So the big takeaway here is just to time your cooldowns, especially on this fight. When the boss splits, note that the armor penetration on him will go away. So ideally you want your warriors to first global sunder. The Bug Trio. So here on the Bug Trio, he also is going to use the same trinkets. Especially Badge of the Storm Guard is because you get a lot of cleave. This is a fight where if the mobs are stacked on each other, you could kind of cheese with a BRE as well, which could be a really useful thing on a boss like Sartura or even potentially Twin Emps. But on the Bug Trio, you do like your, your armor penetration because cleave is going to give you a ton of damage for these parses. So you do want to stack these bosses up, although you do really want to watch out for if you kill Lord Kree first, you do need to make sure that you get out of the bottom of him because he puts down that poison and it can kill you in like two ticks. It's very deadly but right as they go in he's going to use the same thing right death wish badge of the storm guard used together and then he's actually using his other cds early which is blood fury and his earth strike he's using these right away because you're going for as much cleave as possible you're not actually timing out the 20 seconds of earth strike with the 20 seconds of death wish and badge of the swarm guard you're actually going for as much cleave damage as possible on this fight so you can use your cooldowns very early he's still dual wielding so you don't need to use bre here it would be a little cheesy but here you can also see a lot of people do die to that poison that i was mentioning earlier and then once again, stack these bosses up and just go for as much cleave damage as possible. You are going to pump this boss extremely hard. He actually doesn't do the most damage in his entire guild even. And we'll actually look at Sensuo or even the number one parse and check out if they're using something different. Okay, so even on the number one parse, Olando actually does have the number one parse, it just wasn't this one, where it's almost 1.9k DPS, 1.87k DPS. He uses Recklessness that time, which is massive. And he's still dual wielding, which is not actually using something like a BRE. And just going by date, looking at the trinket usage here, a lot of people that do have badge will be using badge and earth strike. And the earlier fights, that are up here are usually people that don't have either of those yet where they're using bb and hodge or diamond flask and dft so it depends on what trinkets you have but again this is a really good fight for that armor penetration and earth strike but again this is a really good fight for that armor penetration especially with the cleave and earth strike just combos perfectly with that Moving on to Battle Guard Sartura. This is a fight where if your guild does it well, you can absolutely pump. If your guild plays it very safe and doesn't auto stun all of the adds and just cleave them down pretty much instantly, then it is intimidating and it's almost impossible to get a really good parse on this fight. And this is another fight, another cleave fight. So you're seeing a combo of Badge of the Swarm Guard and Earth Strike if you have them. Again, this is extremely dependent on if you have them, but this is another fight where you want to use your cooldowns right away because you are doing so much damage in this cleave phase and you want to get as much out of it before all of the adds actually die. This is also one of the scariest fights in this raid where you can die if you take too much AoE damage, so make sure that you're ready to lip. Everyone should be doing this. Everyone should be ready to lip. Ideally, you'll kill the adds first, and then you might use lip while Sartura is spinning just to finish her off and never have to stop DPSing, but always be ready to save yourself and save your world buffs. This is the fight that Alondo will be using his recklessness on, and that's kind of a choice. You can choose two parse on different fights if you want to get the 100 parse or a really, really crazy 99. 
especially cleave fights, if your guild allows you to choose which fight you're going to use your recklessness on, because the number one parse that he has, the still the 100 parse, is recklessness used on the bug trio. Recklessness is massive on these cleave fights. So, death wish, trinkets, everything popped right away, and recklessness. The scary thing would be, I guess, Blood Fury, because you're afraid of taking any damage on this fight, because there is a lot of incoming damage, and you can just die out of nowhere. So don't prioritize that CD as much. But you can see it here. All of the adds died instantly. Recklessness was still up. There's 10 seconds left on his other CDs, and he's going to use a lip so that everyone can stay in and kill the boss and then once it stops spinning it's just gonna get stunned and killed down easy guys if you want to get a crazy parse on this fight he did 2.2k dps if you want to get a crazy parse on battle guard sartura you have to cleave it down and every guild should get really good at doing this the next fight is Fancris, which is a pretty standard fight, guys. It's pretty much a tank and spank. You can actually stack your rage on the adds before you start fighting the boss, and you do want to usually change your trinkets early because you might not have all of them back up. Also, not a fight you would want to use Badge of the Swarm Guard. Badge of the Swarm Guard is very niche, but it is used quite a bit in this raid because there are times when you're losing out on that armor penetration. So he swapped over to DFT and Earth Strike, which this is also a fight where if you had Jom Gabar and you wanted to use that, you probably could because of the fight duration. It would most likely be better than Earth Strike. It just all depends on your fight durations. This is a really good fight to also time your CDs with your Death Wish. So around 20 seconds in on the Death Wish, you can see he uses his Earth Strike and then also Blood Fury, which could have potentially been saved a little bit to, to go with the Mighty Rage potion at the end and the cleave, but it actually just ends pretty much like two seconds before it's over. So a huge, huge part of parsing as a warrior is managing your CDs at the right time and also rage management. But if you don't know how to do that yet already and manage your rotation, then leave a comment below and I will do a guide breaking that down for warriors. I'm not the best warrior in the world. It is really easy to improve by learning from all of the best in the world and analyzing them. That's just how you do it. But I have like 40 DPS weapons. I've got blue weapons, guys. So when I get weapons, I will be absolutely trying to push for these extremely, extremely high 99s as well on my warrior. But that's Fancris, super easy fight, time your CDs, the fight's around 30 seconds to 40 seconds, so you can use Death Wish really early, look at your guild's kill times, but use Death Wish with 30 seconds left, 20 seconds into that, of course, use your other CDs. Princess Huhuran is very similar to Fancris in the stance that it's pretty much the exact same fight, you just stand there and kill the boss. So Death Wish early, and also time out your Earth Strike or whatever your other Trinkets are, if you don't have Earth Strike yet, you can still just use Diamond Flask, and Diamond Flask would last the entire duration, so you can use that instantly on pretty much all of these fights if you're in a parse run or your guild is killing the bosses fast enough. So if you don't have Earth Strike, don't worry, Diamond Flask is extremely good as well. Also, if you are Alliance, Diamond Flask is awesome. So if you want to see a breakdown of all of the Warrior Trinkets and how much DPS they're giving you for different durations of fights, I would suggest following Danboy on YouTube. He has a video that breaks that all down. So yeah, Princess Huron, very simple fight. You do not need to use any nature resistance gear, although you could use a nature resistance potion, a greater nature res, because it will help you take less damage early on and help your healers pump you. But I wouldn't suggest, if you're trying to get a really good parse, using a greater nature res at 30%, which is when the boss enrages and does a lot more damage to you guys. I wouldn't suggest that because you are going for that mighty rage. It just depends if your guild can keep you alive if you trust in your guild. But you'll see again, he will use Death Wish very early on in this fight. And then as usual, we're gonna see Earth Strike being used, but this time it's around 70%. And that's because his guild is pumping this boss faster than they anticipated. So if he wants to get out all of the use of Earth Strike, he's gotta do it now. He also uses Blood Fury on this boss, which is a little sketchy. You just need to really trust your healers, but you need to use it before that 30%. Try to use it before he gets to 30%. So time it out where it is almost done right as the boss goes into enrage. 
And then as usual, we're gonna see him use his Mighty Rage right after the boss hits 20%. He's actually gonna get a huge execute off with it. And he's actually gonna do two of them. He's gonna pull Rage slightly for a second. It doesn't take very long to get massive amounts of Rage on a warrior, especially on Horde. So he's gonna get a massive execute into a Mighty Rage pot, second massive execute. On this fight, he did 1.7K DPS. So the big takeaway is really this is the same thing as Fancris, but if you're gonna use Blood Fury, guys, if you are a horde and using Blood Fury, try to use it a little bit early before the 30% because the rage just takes a lot of damage and if you can't get healed, you're gonna die, most likely. Onwards to Twin Emperors. Twin Emperors is a unique fight because they can't get Fairy Fire off on the boss, Emperor Vecnalash, the one that you are attacking. So it's a really good fight to use Badge of the Swarm Guard. It also is potentially a really good fight to use two on use trinkets because of the duration of you fighting the bosses. But it's also a fight where you could use your DFT. He opts to use DFT here. We have seen actually some people doing really, really well on this fight using different tactics. So you could use BRE and potentially do really well, or we're seeing some people use things like Ribbon Spike just to add extra armor penetration onto the boss. This is a boss where armor penetration is extremely helpful. As he pretty much always does, he combos Death Wish with Badge of the Swarm Guard and Blood Fury. He wants to use all of the cooldowns all at once to get the most advantage out of having that extra armor penetration on the boss. And then they will switch over. And a big thing for getting a good Twin Emps parse, guys, is going to be two things, really. Uptime of your CDs fighting the boss and pretty much uptime of you fighting the boss. So if you have really good tanks and you have a lot of snap threat, you are gonna pump these bosses and get a good parse, but you're never gonna do some ridiculous damage. Just be aware, cause there's a lot of time spent in between the two bosses. You could even use a Swiftness of Zanza pot here just to reduce your time moving in between the bosses, but it's another fight where you're just kind of worried a little bit about DPSing too much and pulling aggro, which isn't a thing for Alliance at all. And and it shouldn't really be in the long run for any horde guilds also. But yes, again, armor penetration. Big fight for armor penetration. Use your CDs when you know that you're gonna be fighting the boss for a long time. So in a time that you wanna use your CDs, usually you would swap early so move over to where he's gonna teleport and get there pretty early so that you can just pump. You could also, if the fight's not gonna last longer than two minutes, you could potentially save a lot of your CDs for execute phase and try to rotate really early just for that and use everything for execute phase. But with the length of this fight duration on average, a lot of times we're seeing people being able to use multiple versions of their CDs. Like if you have a two minute cooldown, you can use it twice a lot of the time. Cthune, the last boss guys. This is a fight where if you are allowed to be in a good position and DPSing the boss itself, then it's pretty easy to get a pretty decent parse because you can just pump the boss. Like he doesn't move. You can use your CDs early. It depends on how long the fight is a little bit. And if you're gonna get one or two of the weakness phases, but it's an easy fight to use your cooldowns early, especially your two minute cooldowns, and then have those back up for when you're killing the boss when he's weakened. Most really good guilds are going to kill the boss if they have their world buffs within or right after the first eye beam, the first massive eye beam that he does, or eye glare, whatever it is. This boss is really easy. When he's doing the glare also, make sure to stand behind him so that you don't get parried at all. Again, I said this on Rogue also, but you do want to position yourself at the front of the room, right here as you can see on the minimap, the part where you enter the room so that you don't get parried from the boss on his phase two phase. So when you need to go in and weaken him, you do not want to get parried. So you'll see all of the people in this guild will move here. You'll be able to backstab the boss if you're a rogue. And if you're a warrior, you won't get parried. Here you can kind of pull rage, but you don't really get very much rage from the boss. 
you can pump these ads down as fast as you can and by the time the boss is weakened again or weakened the first time you should have your two minute cds back up so earth strike you'll see but the three minute cds won't be coming back up in time so i would suggest if your guild is killing the boss pretty fast saving your three minute cds like death wish for the final execution phase or the weekend phase it's really easy to just attack the boss and get slow rage up on him while there's no ads up it's just something that you can do a lot of times you'll see some people just kind of stand around and it's just sort of pointless you can get your sunders and other weakness and abilities up on the boss before he's weakened so just sit there get your rage get ready for him to be weakened ideally you'll weaken him when none of the ads are up or not about to spawn also so you can focus all of your damage on just pumping this boss and killing him during that weakened phase so you also again want to know the length of the fight use your death wish accordingly Use your Earth Strike accordingly. This is not a fight for you to use actually Badge of the Swarm Guard. But if you do still use Diamond Flask, you can use that pretty early on. And then he actually did a lot worse than he could have done, specifically with his CD management. And just look at this, guys. The boss dies with 10 seconds left up on Death Wish. 4 seconds on Recklessness, 8 seconds on Earth Strike. So he could have gotten more out of using these right as the boss gets weakened, which is just something that you're definitely going to see in his next run. And this is also something that you guys should, if you either record your boss fights or look through your logs and check out how long it is during his weakened phase for you guys to kill him, especially if there's only one of them, you could just use your CDs right as the boss becomes targetable not your 10 second one so not recklessness right away but maybe like at 50 percent on the boss cd usage on warriors massive guys and then the final boss for this and for parsing really is oro which is another boss where it's just like watch aggro this is pretty much all it is if you're alliance you don't really have to worry about this at all because you can have a warlock tank technically everyone could have a warlock tank but if you're gonna pull aggro just get into the tank spot. Just if your melee are good and used to doing things correctly, they're gonna pump. And actually in this guild, in Bipolar, as you can see, they actually moved everybody into the tank spot to get sandblasted, just to drop everybody's threat. So it is a useful tactic. And after the first knockback slash sandblast, use your cooldowns like Death Wish, Earth Strike, and usually you'd want to save your intercept to get back in for the next knockback while you're using your cooldowns. So that is something that Alondo didn't do, and I'm not sure if he purposefully didn't do that. But it's another fight, as usual, where you just time your cooldowns and you try to get the most out of the uptime while you're using those cooldowns, and you kill the boss. If you're gonna pull aggro, then get into the tank spot, that's pretty simple like that's something everybody should be used to doing but it's another pretty much tank and spank fight if you're not too worried about aggro and that is it guys that is a warrior breakdown pretty much of every single fight in aq40 and what you want to be thinking about in all of these interactions and what cds you want to use on which fights he does die there at the end but again guys he is still the number one on boss damage and that is the run that he did it so the biggest takeaway usually or should be that you want to time your cooldowns as a warrior you want to know the fight lengths and then you also want to know which cooldowns you're using if it's a cleave fight you want to use your cooldowns early if it is a longer fight or just a tank and spank fight you just want to time your cooldowns so that there's the most uptime of them also utilization of your cds during the execute phase so just know the fight lengths it's really important to know the fight lengths and it's important that your guild does actually cleave if you want to get some crazy parses. I know this wasn't exactly the most mind-blowing breakdown, but I'll do a lot more in-depth things, fight per fight, and a lot more warrior and rogue and pretty much every class content coming soon, guys. So if you like this, again, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see any more videos, 
do hit that like subscribe button if you have anything you want to see me cover just leave it in the comments and also again you can check out my discord channel which is in the description which is so much better than it used to be guys so you can see when i'm going live while i'm changing my schedule or come hang out with me on twitch twitch.tv slash sarth shout out to alondo on his massive massive pump here he is probably going to do a lot more damage in this coming dark moon fair week so keep an eye out for this guys but these are the things you want to watch out for dark moon fair week i do want everyone to know that bosses will die slightly faster than they have been usually in your guild so time your cooldowns accordingly thank you guys for watching and as always i'll see you all in the next one